I was woken up this morning, early this morning, by a series of alarm bells going, text messages coming in, and that news early in the morning is never good. And it wasn't. It was to alert me to a story overnight which said a proposal by controversial broadcaster Darren Hinch to publish details of convicted sex offenders has been shot down by state governments. State and federal justice ministers at the Law, Crime and Community Safety Council meeting on Friday decided against a national register. It's a joke, isn't it? The <laughs> Community Safety Council, they've decided they don't want a public register. It was bad news because I've been campaigning on this issue for probably 25 years. It was back in 2008 that we had a name them, shame them rally on the steps of Parliament House in, in Melbourne and 10,000 people turned up. This year, we've had more than 155,000 people have signed our petition demanding a national public register of convicted sex offenders. Convicted sex offenders. That's it. And I, for now, I guess, we've lost. But some interesting stories around today I want to draw your attention to. The Weekend Australian has a story, a very good story, about uh, the New South Wales sex crime squad. Um, but it has some clues in there as to the muddled thinking of some of our senior policemen and our politicians. They refer to that squad as the Scorpion Squad. And they call it the Scorpion Squad because a scorpion is the natural predator for a rock spider. Now, rock spiders hide. So that shows you the scorpions are there to dig out these hidden rock spiders. And that's the thing about the, the opposition to public register. Policemen and politicians keep telling me, they say, oh, if you have a public register, that will drive them underground. They'll all go underground. They're already underground. They're already underground. The coppers tell me the biggest weapon of a pedophile is secrecy, is anonymity. They hide and they're very cunning. It's like saying, oh, we can't go after cockroaches. Don't turn the spotlight on cockroaches because they will run and hide. So this is rubbish. I'm pushing still just as hard to get a national register. Maybe one day it will happen. It's more than 20 years since we had one, got one with Megan's Law in the United States. But what angers me about it all is I talked about it last week on my blog for a policeman who wrote a uniform copper saying, this is crazy. We should have these photos on on pamphlets so we could have an hour unit, carry them around with us. He said, these names are kept in a locked drawer. The Weekend Australian article referred to this secret list as though it's something like, like the Masonic Lodge or something that, oh, we can't tell people. You have a right to know who these people are. And by having a public register, it brings them out into the public. Now, we had a case in Victoria recently where a man escaped, got rid of his electronic tag, a very serious sex offender, if he was living in the village of the damned outside Ararat prison. And he escaped. And they warned people about him and warned you to be careful. But they didn't tell the public for 12 hours. The reason was he escaped out of Habas one in the morning. By the time they went back to court and got a suppression order lifted and gave them the right to name him and show you his photograph, 12 hours had passed. In South Australia, oh, they're being very very progressive there. The, Vic, the uh, South Australian Police Force, they recently had two sex offenders who absconded, hadn't reported to police as they were due to. And so they put their photos up on the police website. But they warned the media, they warned TV stations and newspapers that they could not publish the photographs that would be against the law. Now, this is naughty land. It is absolute naughty land. Um, we need Megan's Law here. You have a right to know. The public has a right to know. We had another case recently that I was campaigning on quite heavily, and we put it on Hinch Tube, and that was the case of Kevin Briscoe. Now, I got a tip that Briscoe, who's been offending against children for 50 years, had been released from jail quietly and was living within a block of a primary school in Melbourne. Now, we tracked him down, and I interviewed him. And he said, oh, he said, I'm not likely to reoffend if I stay off the drink. Now, we, he was living a, one block from a primary school and police admitted to me that they couldn't, um, couldn't even warn the principal of that primary school that there was this convicted sex offender, a predator living in the area because that was a violation of his, his civil rights and his privacy. Now, this is madness. And it can make it even crazier. Since we broke the story, they immediately moved him somewhere else. And last week... They went to court and got another suppression order so that if I do find out 
where Briscoe lives again, I can't tell you because that would be against the law, contempt of court, and I'll be back in jail. Now, in that story I mentioned about the Weekend Australian, they made much of the fact that, oh, the secret list, and we can't even tell you how many names are on it. Well, I can tell you, there are, in Victoria, there are more than 5,000 names on the list. In New South Wales, there are more than 7,000 names on the list. A local newspaper in Melbourne tried to even get the postcodes to find out where the biggest clusters of sex offenders were living and were told, no, you can't have that. Even under FOI, that's, that's secret, that's private. Now, policemen, senior policemen have told me that the current system is not working. It is not working. In New South Wales, they, the, the articles, they're talking about how they must interact with these pedophiles, so keep tabs on them. Well, there are 7,000 of them. How on earth are New South Wales police going to keep tabs on 7,000 people? When we did the jail to justice walk, I talked to a senior policeman in Ballarat. There are about 120 people on the list there. If he visited three of them a day, he still couldn't get through the whole 120 in a month. Can you imagine in Victoria where there are 5,000? How many police are going to keep tabs on 5,000 sex offenders? So anyway, it's not good news today. Um, we've failed so far, but 155,000 of you have signed that petition. It is important you keep going. So for now, we've failed. But to quote somebody far more eloquent than me, Gough Whitlam, maintain the rage. You've got elections coming up. Pin your politicians, the Attorney General, uh, your local member. Don't blame the cops, the police officers, the men and the women of the police force. They are doing their job. They're just enforcing the law. They can't get the word out there. They're not allowed to. So put the pressure on the politicians. Keep it going. We've got 155,000 of you have signed the petition. I go, if we get it to a million, maybe they'll listen to us. I don't know. Where do we go from here? Right now? I don't know. But I'm not giving up. Maintain the rage.